Hi there. Well, today's video is going to be a life update. I feel like I really owe you one at this point. A lot's been going on over the last few months. You may have noticed that I've not been posting as many videos um, as I had in the past. And I did share with you a few months ago that my father-in-law has been diagnosed with ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, as it may more commonly be known. I wanted to just kind of talk to you a little bit about the progress, what's going on with that. A lot of you have left us really nice comments, encouraging comments, just letting us know that you're praying for us, thinking about us, and we really appreciate all of that. And so I just wanted to talk to you about what's been going on and what's been happening since you all have been so kind to us. So um, since I, I sort of announced that we had that diagnosis. I think that was back maybe in September or so when I first talked about it, maybe October. We have had a follow-up appointment, sort of a, actually it's more like a second or third opinion in Tampa. So they have an ALS specialty clinic there. And so my father-in-law had been referred there. Actually, before I go any further, I did want to say too, in my last video, I accidentally said my father. My brain was obviously not clearly engaged with my mouth and I meant to say my father-in-law. This is my husband's father that is dealing with this disease. So let me just clear that up and then go forward. So we did go to an appointment in November at the ALS clinic in Tampa where he did get confirmation of his diagnosis. So we are very certain this is what we're dealing with, but the symptoms of what's happening to him also made it very clear of what's going on. Um, I may have mentioned to you when I first let you know about his diagnosis that we'd known something was seriously wrong for quite a while. I think his symptoms initially started around January or February of last year, so for about a year now. But a lot of us in the family were really convinced he had had a stroke. He um, has what's known as limb onset. ALS. Some people have bulbar onset, so their symptoms may start in their mouth area. They may have swallowing or speaking difficulties, but his was definitely limb onset. He started having some weakness in his left arm. Then the arm got very swollen and just started to progress. And over time, he wasn't able to use that arm at all. So that was really the first way that we knew that something was going on. And then over time, he started seeing quite a few specialists. He saw a neurology, he saw a vascular specialist, he saw um, an orthopedic surgeon, he saw, um, I'm leaving one out here, he saw so many specialists and it is one of those sort of uh, process of elimination diagnosis. And so we did finally get to the point where he had a second round of testing. And so his neurologist and then another neurologist in the practice confirmed that it was ALS and then sent him on to the Tampa clinic. So that was the appointment that we had in November. The doctor there who was a specialist in neuromuscular disease confirmed it and also confirmed kind of what we suspected that he is progressing very, very quickly. It is um, a disease that is sort of unique to each person. People can progress at different rates and because there are different areas of onset, people progress in different ways. And for him, unfortunately, it's not only progressing really rapidly, but he's experiencing symptoms sort of everywhere at once. Um, he is noticing new things sort of crop up almost, I would say, on a weekly basis. We're noticing a lot of deterioration, unfortunately, and his doctor did let us know that his case is one of those that he's going to notice the symptoms um, rapidly as we move along. So we are in hospice with him. We started hospice actually right before that appointment to Tampa. It became pretty clear to us that something was going on that uh, did require hospice care and his local neurologist agreed with that. And so he unfortunately at this point has lost use of both of his arms. He has lost use of one leg. He has use of the other leg. However, he's not able to uh, bear weight on a consistent basis. He can still stand up and we can sort of pivot him to a new location. So by that I mean he's sitting either in a wheelchair or in the living room on the couch and so we're kind of moving him back and forth to wherever he's comfortable or in his bed. And um, he it, in the beginning was able to stand up on his own and of course he was walking and doing all those things and now at this point it takes um, one or two people to sort of lift him up and then he can sort of pivot, kind of put his legs underneath him to move to the other location. But Again, because of his rapid progression, we're sort of losing some of those abilities very quickly as well. 
So as I mentioned, we have started hospice care for him and right now they're coming in weekly to check on him and then they're also sending an aid out a couple of times a week to help with any daily uh, living activities, any bathing or things like that that my mother-in-law may need help with with him. But she also has care there 24 seven. So she has hired people that spend most of the daytime with him so that she's able to go and run errands and just pick up prescriptions and do things that she needs to do. And then some Someone is there every single night for a 12 hour shift so he's never left by himself. Um, he is still able to talk at this point although his speech is becoming a little bit harder to understand. His voice is becoming a little bit more lowered and he's having some slurring and things like that. So those are the bull bar symptoms that some people experience as their initial symptom. He's just now getting to those sort of symptoms. And then eventually those kinds of symptoms can impact breathing and things like that, which we are seeing a little bit of when we were in Tampa, they did measure his breathing and things like that. So they were, um, the readings were coming up about where they would expect them to be given his progression and given where he is in the disease. But so those are some things that we are contending with. Um, he has elected not to go forward with any sort of artificial ventilation or feeding tubes or anything like that. So our main focus is just to keep him as comfortable as possible as you can imagine. And um, just, you know, kind of managing the symptoms as they come up. Hospice has been really great at sort of getting us prepared for all of that, making sure that we have the things that we need in place. And uh, just, you know, it's one of those things that you, it's a disease you try to stay ahead of, but with his progression being so rapid, we've been having a hard time doing that. But I think we're finally at a place where we're able to kind of understand what's happening. We've all accepted it and we can kind of just um, go forward sort of knowing a little bit about what to expect and make the most of the time that we have. Um, because we do have 24-7 care in place, it's we've kind of gotten into a little bit of a rhythm. It's not one of those things that you ever expect that you're going to get used to. It's not something that gets any easier. It does get more difficult, but I think we've gotten better at managing it as we've gone along. Um, as you can imagine, it's uh, there's a lot of good days and bad days. Sometimes things are very emotional. Sometimes they've calmed down a little bit. Uh, one of the unfortunate parts of this disease as well, and this does affect um, uh, a percent percentage of the people with it, is he is having some memory loss and things like that. So there's a little bit of confusion and uh, agitation and things going on at times, and that can vary on a day-to-day -day basis. And that does make it a little bit more uh, emotional as well. As far as holidays go, we had a fantastic holiday season. My husband's aunt was able to come in from Los Angeles to visit. This is her brother. Uh, my father-in-law is her brother. And so she was able to come in for a week at Thanksgiving. So we got to spend a lot of time with her and him during that time. Then my husband also had a week off at Christmas. So we were able to do some things then. And we had a really, really great Christmas this year. My brother-in-law did a wonderful meal for all of us. And it's it's just been a really special time. Um, the disease, of course, does cast a little bit of a shadow over everything that's going on, but at the same time, it's really just sort of emphasized uh, to us the importance of making the most of each of these holidays and spending time together and just really coming together, working well um, together to accomplish things and just to make every day as easy as we can and every holiday as special as we can and just sort of reminding us to tell each other that we love each other more and just how much we appreciate each other. So in that way, it's been a really great thing for our family. My mother-in-law is doing very well given the circumstances. She has had unfortunately two trips to the emergency room herself over the past six weeks or so. Uh, she has diabetes and so she's just been thoroughly exhausted um, from all of this and her blood sugar. She's had some issues due to the stress of that, but I think we finally have that under control. She's been visiting her doctor as well just to make sure that she's taking the best care of herself as possible, which you can imagine is kind of difficult to do um, in this set of circumstances. But now that we have 24-hour uh, care for dad, we can kind of make sure that she's taken care of as well and we're trying to do our best to make some things, some day-to-day -day things as easy on her as we can. Um, but it is, you know, still obviously a very difficult situation. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, Daddy is going to be home 
Um, for as far as we can tell, he is going to be home for the duration, and so hospices, their care increases as time goes on, and so we just have to make sure that we do everything we can to make the most of the time that we have and to keep him comfortable, and um, that's it. So I just wanted to say thank you again so much for all of your care and concern and your thoughts and prayers and just letting um, me and David know that you're thinking about us. It's meant a lot. Um, when you're going through something like this, it can really feel like you're sort of disconnected from everyone, especially since I haven't had as much time to make videos and things like that. But it is just nice to know that everyone's still thinking about us and we really appreciate it so much. Um, I'm going to do a, try to do a little bit better this month and getting more videos up a little bit more frequently. I do have some things planned. I need to do my favorites for 2015, which is a video that I always really look forward to doing. I'm going to be doing a What's on My Kindle video. I'm going to be doing a second one. I really enjoyed the last one I did of that. I think I have a recipe that I want to share. And of course, as always, if you have any requests, I would love to hear those as well. So that is it. I hope you all had a really wonderful holiday season. I hope that you had a great Thanksgiving, a Hanukkah, Christmas, whatever you're celebrating. I hope that it was as special as ours was. So I thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you very soon. Bye-bye.